Well, there's work spanning um, the last um, 10 years or so here. And a lot of these works are reworked and reformed and reconstituted into new works. But they, their origins lie sometime in the last 10 years. Um, I decided the choices of the works are a lot to do with the stories which I'm interested in telling at this particular time. So the title of the show is Tales of the Authentic and the, the tales which are constituted by the works in this show are stories from my recent past here in Basel and also the years in which um, that came shortly before that. So it's a point of, um, of reinventing myself in this, in this new, new country, if you like. I'm not only interested in the process of photography of capturing images but also the materials of the photograph and of also um, of various materials which are now used in photography. So with, with recent advancements in, in, um, in technology, um, in photo printing and with the new surfaces that we are able to print upon. Um, I became interested in it by pap and chance, by working with, um, with the photographic paper and, and exploring the potential of the paper itself and what happens when you take this paper and you manipulate it so it's not only a carrier of this image, of this motif, but then it's also developed a relationship with the motif by how you handle that, if you crumple it into a ball, if you're printing it in black and white instead of colour, you give a different kind of impression of the motif that's on the paper. So taking something, an everyday scene from, from now, but printing it in black and white could give this impression of nostalgia, of melancholy, and um, developing, in a sense, a new, perhaps a new narrative which could be read into the work. So when you tear a photograph, it looks, the photograph itself somehow develops its own history. It's almost a record of itself as well as that which you've printed upon it. Um, and I was playing, uh, I've been playing a lot with this over many years um, um, to, from very traditional um, starting point with chemicals and photo processing in the dark room to physically folding and crumpling photographs and actively destroying the photographic paper. Um, also then what was interesting is what happens to the paper once you've disrupted its surface. Because the photograph is not meant to be folded or, or creased. So you're actually you, you're changing the way that that photograph then ages. So it really starts to develop its own patina, like other art materials. And this patina is then changing through the years. So the photograph, in a sense, is also, like I said before, it's, it's also recording its own passage of time. Um, going from that down to my most recent works, which are photo, which is printing on, on glass, which also kind of goes back to the early days of photography, which was also where photographic images were printed directly onto glass. 
um, but now using the new techniques available um, rather than this sort of, yeah, it's kind of like full coming full circle. The glass um, works, the photo works, are um, puddles um, and the puddles originate in memories, in childhood memories of mine um, growing up in Manchester. Um, there's also quite a lot of rain there and my, the photographs are named after my family cars. So we had a lot of different cars, they were pretty much always wrecks never really in good condition um, and they were constantly spilling oil and diesel etc onto the street um, usually in puddles um, so I had this very strong memory of these puddles being very beautiful with this this rainbows um, streaks through them thinking and how beautiful they were and um, this was a very strong memory of mine from childhood and I wanted to, for a long time, be able to recreate these works. And I was lucky enough to, to receive an artist grant um, this last year to produce them as photographs. Um, they're basically, I took photographs in the studio um, with a photographer together. We, we made very small puddles of water and then we put petrol directly into these, these, these very small puddles and then took many pictures until the, the, the rainbows dissipated. Um, these images were then blown up, um, just like normal photographic images are enlarged and then the shape of the puddle was cut out with a water laser jet um, technique and um, so it's exactly the, the same shape, just larger. And the puddles were then ground down by hand all around the, the outline to create this soft water um, look. And then finally the, the image was printed onto to the glass. So it's like the paper of the image being, being um, exposed onto to the paper. Um, yeah, there were seven, seven of these puddles. Um, two of them are being exhibited here, two at the Kunsthaus, three at the Kunsthaus Zurich, and um, they all have individual car names named after each of, of the cars. So here we have the Toyota Corolla and, oh, which one it was? Montego. <laughs> the MG Montego, yes, yeah. The works that are downstairs are some of the, the earliest works in the show and these are, um, they were printed in 2005. Um, the, the photographs themselves were taken in 2000. Um, and these, these images were used, were, were, I developed them with old photographic paper and the paper itself um, was out of date and the silver that was inside the paper kind of was exploding out of the paper. So it's kind of almost like the paper itself was, was making its presence known and it was kind of mixing together with the motif which was being printed upon it. I was really interested in this, in this 
this kind of happen chance events with the material somehow making itself known um, and creating this new dynamic between that and the motif um, which was printed upon it. Um, I brought these images together with a few others in a small box with me when I moved to Basel and uh, it's all I brought with me um, and um, and these over the last years have also been developing more of a patina and also creased and torn a bit and I was never really that um, careful with them it seems and um, and these really form the basis of I think most of the work which has followed it. That, that really kind of drew me to this idea of these materials really, in a sense, taking on a life of their own, developing their own or evolving in their own ways. Um, and forming these new dialogues between the material and this motif. Um, and yeah, it's kind of, it's branched off into different directions, but they essentially were like this nucleus which began this, this whole development of my work. I'm sure I'll be, um, I mean I like to use lots of materials, I like to play a lot with materials and pushing them into all different directions, kind of like um, this idea of aspiration, taking the materials to, um, to be the, the, know, the most extreme they can be or, um, or becoming very beautiful and uh, the utilitarian aspects being taken over. Um, and just being admired for just their materiality rather than their usefulness. And I think my work is very much in this direction, going in this direction. There's a lot of playing with materials, giving them a new face, giving them a new identity. Um, so this trompe l'oeil, but also um, very much still working um, with this idea of records, that all these objects are records, that they are all a part of my own personal history. And I speak very much about my personal history, but also I think connecting to lots of, a lot of people's memories. So the puddles are, are very much a universal memory. Um, there's kind of this uh, street furniture, there's the stuff we put in our backyards, the, the plastics which are used within sort of home decorating. They're very much materials which people have an affinity and a relationship to. And um, I, yeah, I mean, I see that, that this, this is the direction for the foreseeable future. But, yeah, we'll see. <laughs>